Hi friends, this is Sarah from Crafting and Relaxing. Welcome, I'm so very glad that you joined me today. In this video, I'm showing you a lovely cabinet that I made my husband haul home from our neighbors and the steps that it went through. It had contact paper and this green smushy linoleum on top of it. My husband was horrified that I had him bring this home, but it was literally at my next door neighbors. I mean, it's horrible and it's gross, but it was super close and handy. And look at those drawers. Keep in mind that I'm a DIY person. And when I made my channel, that's why I named it General. It wasn't just about paper. Once I looked at that green top, I knew it had to come off. So I got a putty knife and some various tools and started going for it. If you have experience in home improvement, a small cabinet is nothing, right? I have the tools. There's no reason I can't do projects like this. It's just a matter of putting in the time. And you can see at this point in the video, it seems like the sun's kind of going down a little. <laughs> then I'm showing you that I'm pulling the back off. You should definitely wear gloves when you do this. Yep, wear gloves. Don't learn bad habits from me. I'm terrible about that. There's loose nails. And what I did was I put the garbage can right next to it. So as I pulled pieces off, I was putting them into the garbage can. Then there was this weird, like, tar paper goop mess under it. I don't know if that's old linoleum or what. It, it was horrible. Like this I had to work on and it was this big mess. And my goal was just to kind of get it thinned down that night and stick with it. So this is what it looked like the next morning or that evening when I finished. I had the majority of off, the majority of it off and it was thinner. And then I got super lucky, you guys. I left that cabinet out overnight and that was paper, right? It was like this weird paper and it got damp with the dew and I scraped it off. I didn't have to use any like stripper or any fancy remover, nothing. I just had to use a little more elbow grease, some putty knives and it came off. It, it was gross. It was disgusting and horrifying, but it came off. This is not a project I would recommend you do inside. Look, there we go. Then I'm sanding a bit to clean it up. As I was saying, this is not a project I would recommend you do inside or with small children around. I'm sure there are old toxic products. Here are the drawers after I'd primed them once. And then I'm going to take you over to the cabinet and show you. I didn't get all the adhesive off of it, but I just decided to hit it with some primer and see. And sorry, I'm holding the camera in my left hand while I'm trying to include you in this project. I have home improvement supplies. So I have paint brushes, I have primer, I have paint. So it's just a matter of me looking around and deciding what I want to use. I didn't go out and buy a single thing for this project. That makes it reasonably affordable. Chalk paint would have worked fabulous on this. You wouldn't have had to paint and prime and all of that but I think a quart of chalk paint a really good one is like $30 and you can't buy it right down the street so I just thought well I'll do it this way and you can see this is after I had primed it once and I'm putting the second coat of primer and I just turned on the camera so you guys could see that section how it goes from a yellow tone to white at that point that's water all over my sweatshirt. It was morning, like 6 a.m., and the grass brushed me when I walked by. So you can see, I didn't do a great job cleaning it up. I didn't do a great job priming it. I just thought, well, this will either work or it won't. I approached it just like I approach any other craft project. I'm not looking to sell it. I wanted it for more storage. All those cute little drawers and that cupboard, sign me up, right? I mean... As crafters, we can never have too many spaces to store things. And I'm not sure if I'll put this in my craft room. If you saw my recent video, I don't necessarily have a spot for it right now. But the dogs have a giant couch that I don't see staying here long, long term. Okay, and this is what it looked like when it was primed and ready to go. And I'm just showing you how it looks. Then I'm going to show you what I did with the knobs. I just unscrewed them, took them off. I put them in this box. I messed up and sprayed them with this teal. It took me like literally a minute or two and I forgot to turn the camera on. Now I'm just touching up with the teal. I want them to be blue 
but they were like a silver metallic and I don't have a lot of the blue paint. Andy Mess, my friend Andrea, bought a million cans. I mean like four or five cans of this teal, this two times ultra cover. This goes on like a dream. Neither one of us are in love with the color. So I just thought I'd use it as a base and then this Rust-Oleum Satin in Sapphire. I know you're surprised if you watch my channel. It's like my favorite paint. I have four different blue paints and that's my favorite. So then I let them dry. I came back and checked on them. Yep, they're dry. And actually I had bark dust blown into the front yard while these were drying. So I was kind of feeling them to see if bark was stuck in them. But they were fine. It turned out fine. And then I'm going to hit them with the blue sapphire. And it doesn't go on quite as well. The sprayer isn't as nice. But it is the most beautiful color. And what I did was I put them in the box. All of them lined up the same way and moved over some. Kind of thinking that the side you're seeing would be the top. Because if you put them in a box, you can't spray them all as well. You don't have as much angle flexibility. But I put them in a box so I could pick them up and move them. And the weather was a little weird, so I wasn't sure. I didn't feel great about putting them on like a cereal box that would be floppy. Then I tried to tip the box and knocked that one over, messed it up, had to hit it with the paint. And when I set it down, I set it on the paint lid, so then I couldn't really move that. And I just decided that was fine. And here what I'm doing is just touching those up because those are going to be the top. And again, I had the spray paint. I had everything. So if you have the supplies at your house and the space, you can do all sorts of things. If you don't, maybe don't bring ugly trash home. Okay, so the reflection of the light, that's all you see. But other than that, really good coverage and the most beautiful coverage color ever. And now you're going to see how it turned out. It's white. It has blue knobs. The day that I did it, the color wasn't very good. Like the light outside, it was cloudy when I tried to make this video. It It's pretty white. There's a couple spots I need to touch up, but I could put it in a craft room. You know I'd put so much junk on the top of it. It wouldn't even matter what the top looked like. But the, the cupboard door, actually, I need to touch up a little. That's where my issues are. It's funny. I got the top perfect and you'll never see it. And again, that's the Rust-Oleum satin that I used on the knobs. And those were just the knobs that came with it. And I figure I have another knob somewhere that I can use for that bottom drawer because it was missing. And then I used that Kills interior paint just because that's what I had. So I just went through my shop and looked at what I had. And then I'm showing you that one doesn't have a knob. I need to put one on it. And I didn't worry too much about filling holes. I filled a couple of them, but I just didn't overthink it. And I think it turned out fine. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.